Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tony Bernardo, and it's my privilege to serve as Dean of UCLA Anderson. Welcome to our 2020 commencement celebration. And greetings to our most special guests, the MBA and PhD classes of 2020. This, of course, is the first Anderson commencement to be held virtually. And while we all would have preferred to have gathered on campus and in person, the pride we feel today in your accomplishments is stronger than ever. Despite the extraordinary circumstances, you, the class of 2020, have made it to this day. And you've not only reached this day, but you've done it showing grit, resilience, creativity, and compassion for others. That makes all of us exceptionally proud. So we're here to celebrate you, but we also have a few other very special people to thank and recognize. We know that earning an Anderson MBA, even in normal times, takes a lot of hard work, discipline, and dedication. But that doesn't happen by itself. It takes the support and dedication of those closest to you, and this year, possibly more than ever. That means your family and friends, your spouses and partners, your classmates, your case competition partners, your fellow club members, your mentors, and your favorite faculty members. Every one of them has had a role in your success and in helping you reach this auspicious day. So graduates, please turn to the family and friends who are there in the room with you or sharing this day with you from afar and thank them for all they've done. We are all grateful to all of you. And just a reminder that as we go forward with our celebration, even though this one is a little different from the usual, we are sharing it on Anderson's social media platforms and you are welcome to do the same. Our commencement hashtag is UCLA 2020. Graduates, I've been thinking about this day a lot lately, thinking about the world that awaits you and about the last few months and weeks. What occurs to me again and again is just how much our communities, our organizations and our society need young people like you right now, people with the talents and the courage to make a difference. Our communities and our country have been shaken to their core this spring, first by the coronavirus pandemic, more recently by the continuing scourge of racial injustice. I, and I know many of you, have been shaken too. The killings of George Floyd and of other African Americans, including Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery, have horrified, saddened, and outraged people across the US and around the world. And they've cast a deservedly harsh spotlight on the inequities and injustices that continue to plague our society in access to education, in access to health care, housing, banking, economic opportunity of all kinds, and in our criminal justice system. These inequities, biases, and injustices also exist in businesses and organizations of all types at all levels. I urge you, as UCLA Anderson graduates and as leaders, to commit to doing your utmost to address these difficult issues in your careers and your lives with an open mind, a courageous heart, and respect for all. We will all benefit. Looking back a few months, I want to touch briefly on the three themes with which we began our journey together in your final eventful quarter. They are excellence, partnership, and community. These three themes supported us through the upheaval and uncertainties of the past months, and if you hold on to them, they'll continue to serve you throughout your lives. First, excellence. You were admitted to UCLA Anderson because you'd already proven your commitment to excellence. Each of you came into our school with the ability and the will to excel at whatever you set your mind to achieve. Over the past two or three years, you have been challenged and tested. You've been taken well out of your comfort zones and tried like no other class before you, as I've mentioned through not one, but two crises of global and historic proportion. Through it all, you've kept your focus and you've excelled. At any point, you might have eased up on your efforts and settled for less than your best. In these last few difficult months, you might have given up entirely, but you didn't. You continued to ask the most of yourselves and of each other. You sought and you achieved excellence. Now you leave Anderson as leaders who will take that tenacity into your careers and into your communities. You exemplify excellence. Remember that always. You are capable and you are strong. Second, partnership. None of us achieves excellence alone. We are dependent on one another for guidance and support, for collaboration, and for healthy competition. To succeed in school, in careers, or in life, we quite simply need each other. When I think back on this time at Anderson, I'll forever be grateful for the partnership among students and faculty, staff and alumni that saw us through so many challenges and enabled us to adapt and succeed together. Those partnerships have been truly inspiring. As I learned quickly, the higher you climb in your organizations, the more you will need to rely on the abilities, insights, and counsel of those around you. Always value and nurture 
the partnerships in your life, professional or personal, they'll be at the center of your success and your happiness. Third, community. As graduates of UCLA Anderson, I hope you'll carry on the mission of this great university, the number one public university in the nation and one of the finest in the world. Beyond the pursuit of our own excellence in education and research, our shared mission is to serve our community and the greater good. That mission is more important today than ever, and that has never been more clear. Judging by the compassion, generosity, and drive I've witnessed over the past months and years with you, I have confidence that you will lead positive change in a world that desperately needs your talents, your skills, and your humanity. Among the lessons of the last few months is that our world is one of great promise, but of deep, sometimes unexpected challenges, and that our society continues to be riven by inequities. I hope that as you go forward in your careers and your lives, you'll use your gifts and the skills you've learned at Anderson to help build a more equitable world. There are so many worthy and complex societal issues that deserve attention and significant effort from each of us, including health care, sustainability, climate change, homelessness, and broad-based inequity and injustice. There's room and scope for innovation, technology, entrepreneurship, and management to play a role in pushing for solutions in each of these, and I hope you'll do whatever you can to help. I believe that each of us can make a real difference in the lives of those around us, and each of us can create significant positive change. If we are inspired, work hard, and use our talents and skills for the greater good. One thing I know for certain about this group, you're resilient and you're resourceful. That will serve you well as you head out into the next phase of your lives and your careers as principled, values-driven leaders. The world needs you, each of you, and the considerable gifts you carry with you. In the years ahead, I hope you'll look fondly on the time you spent at Anderson. We hope you'll return often, including next year for an in-person event to celebrate your graduation on campus. We hope too that as a proud Anderson alumni, you'll be part of the commitment we make to future generations of talented students. Please stay involved, show up, be counted, and when you can, give back in any way you can. We look forward to hearing about your lives, your careers, and your progress. We are all proud of you and your accomplishments. I look forward to seeing you a year from now and hearing about all the tremendous things you've done. It is now my privilege to introduce our keynote speaker, Mike Hopkins, a dynamic entertainment industry leader who is the Senior Vice President of Prime Video and Amazon Studios. Mike, who we can say proudly is also a UCLA Anderson alumnus, joined Amazon earlier this year and he oversees all aspects of Amazon's video entertainment businesses. Mike's appointment to his role in February was described by entertainment industry analysts and reporters as a massive hire and a home run addition for Amazon. He has a 25-year track record of innovative leadership in the entertainment industry. Before joining Amazon, he served as chairman of Sony Pictures Television, overseeing all television production, distribution, and marketing operations globally for the studio, as well as Sony Pictures Entertainment's media networks business. Prior to that, he was CEO of Hulu, where he led the company in nearly quintupling its market valuation, growing its audience to more than 47 million total unique users and building its premium Hulu Originals programming slate. Earlier in his career, Mike was a longtime executive at Fox Networks, culminating in his role as president of distribution. He holds a bachelor's degree from Cal State University Long Beach, and he earned his MBA from UCLA Anderson. He's also a longtime member of UCLA Anderson's Board of Advisors. And we're so honored to have him as our speaker today. Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, Mike Hopkins. Thank you, Dean Bernardo. Your leadership of the school during this first tumultuous year has been truly remarkable. And thanks to the Anderson faculty and the Board of Advisors for this humbling opportunity. It's a great honor to be speaking with you today and be part of this historic commencement. Good afternoon, class of 2020, and congratulations. This is a big achievement an MBA from one of the top business schools in the world. This is a reason to celebrate. I know some of you may not feel like celebrating, but you must. You achieved something that very few people have done, receive an MBA, and you did it from an amazing university. For the next week, month, or whenever you're feeling down or worried about the state of the world, relish this moment as a reminder of what you've accomplished and what you're capable of. This group will solve big problems, create new businesses, and lead organizations big and small, corporate and nonprofit, and in our state and federal capital buildings. COVID-19 has impacted so much of our lives, 
and I hope you and your loved ones have stayed safe and healthy during this challenging and troubling time. As a Washington Post writer recently said, America is at a low ebb. Over 100,000 of our fellow citizens have died. 40 million are unemployed. The brutal murder of George Floyd in Minnesota rightfully angered a nation who rose up to call for justice and change. Those peaceful protests have been marred by questionable police tactics and have been hijacked by looters and destructive forces looking to inflame our country's divisions. We as a people have to find ways to lift this tide. Vaccines can cure diseases, stimulus and innovation can jumpstart an economy, broken glass can be repaired, graffiti can be wiped away, but the racial, societal, and cultural wounds that afflict this country are much harder to heal. A lonely nation turns its eyes to you, class of 2020, to find that better way. That's what commencements are supposed to be about, a more hopeful future. Look, this isn't how any of us hoped today would go. Believe me, I was excited to be together in person and bask in all the pomp and circumstance that comes with a graduation. Take pictures, throw our caps in the air, but instead it's just me, Alan, who's operating a camera from a safe distance away with a mask on. He checked my temperature a moment ago, all clear. And perhaps that's the greatest lesson I can impart in leadership. Things don't always go as planned. You usually set out to do something great. Sometimes it happens and it's magical, but many times it winds up just being you, Alan, and a thermometer. Failure, disappointment, setbacks. As terrible as they can be, they mold us into who we truly are. Winston Churchill once said, if you're going through hell, keep going. Well, that's your job from this day forward. Keep going and find that better way. That is where the true test of leadership is revealed. And we've seen plenty of examples of good and bad leadership over the past three months. As part of the broader Amazon leadership team, during this difficult period, we have regular calls to discuss our responses and plans. And over the past few months, I've heard things I never thought I'd hear in a management meeting. How quickly can we get PPE to our frontline employees? How can we help ramp up production of ventilators? Who's our expert in virus testing? And how can we test all of our employees? And I've personally witnessed leaders rising to meet those challenges and rolling with every punch and pivoting to every new need. And it's happening in boardrooms and hospitals, restaurants, grocery stores, schools and warehouses all across the planet. When you step back, the human spirit and our ability to rise up out of despair is awe-inspiring. These days, we often hear we're living through a once-in-a-lifetime experience. And I don't want to undercut what we've been through. But COVID-19 will not be the last crisis you have to endure. That I can promise. Life is filled with those once-in-a-lifetime experiences, professionally and personally. In my career, I've lived through the 1989 recession, the LA uprising, the dot-com bubble, 9-11, the Great Recession. We've had devastating fires, pandemics, wars, storms, and national tragedies. Big, massive world events that shape our lives and impact our communities and businesses. I don't want to sugarcoat this. I know that you started this final quarter in the hottest job market in 50 years. And within a few weeks, our country now has unemployment not seen since the Great Depression. I have enormous empathy for what each of you will endure. If you're starting a new role, you will likely onboard remotely. And if you haven't landed a new job, it will not be as easy as you thought just a few months ago. But it's important to know you will get through it. Like all great global tragedies, this too shall pass, it really will. You've got to keep going. I like to keep things simple. I've seen plenty of speeches with five tips or the top 10 things you can do to advance your career. I usually can't remember more than three things. So if you want 10, you can find them over at YouTube. But I've chosen three things, three characteristics that I hope will help you through the tough times and help you thrive in life and in your careers. Number one is resilience. If you learn to ski, the first thing the instructor tells you is you're gonna fall a lot and it's gonna hurt until it doesn't. To get to that point, you need to keep getting up, shaking it off 
and getting right back out on the slopes over and over again. We all get knocked down. It's going to happen a lot in your career. If it doesn't, you might not be pushing yourself hard enough. When you fail, there are always valuable lessons to learn in adversity. Look for them. They are gold. Write them down. Remember them. You will use them. Every time there's a crisis, big and small, how each of us react determines who we are as people and as leaders. And those reactions will change how people ultimately see us, in fact, how we view ourselves. It's true in business, in marriage, in parenting, in all aspects of life. When bad things happen, human instincts are often to run. It's hardwired in us. But leaders stay. We roll up our sleeves and we get stuff done. And we don't always get it all right. We need to ask for help, gather the facts, listen to others, and then make the best decision possible. Millions of people in America and around the world have been protesting for a more fair, just, and equal society. It is up to all of us as leaders to listen and determine where we can do better and to use our positions of authority to force change. Which brings me to the second thing you need to know, your values. Values are emblematic of who we are. Ask yourself, what's most important to me? Trust, equality, fairness, integrity, loyalty, work ethic. Then ask, what's important to my friends, my colleagues, my employer? Do they match up? That answer will guide you. I try to practice what I call ethical leadership. John Anderson's mantra, do the right thing, very much embodies this idea. Tell the truth, give more than you take, treat people how you would like to be treated, even when it's not popular. It's the basic stuff we're all taught, but often ignore. Ethical leadership will result in business cultures that drive high performance and growth, and they're a lot more fun to work in. Competition is good, selfishness is not. The entertainment business, like many businesses, can be a rough and tumble game, a zero-sum game. Almost every aspect of it can take on that feeling if you let it. I'm certainly not perfect, but I decided pretty early on that I wasn't going to play the game that way. Instead, I rooted myself in core values like honoring my word, helping others to succeed, and trying to find the win-win solution. That's not as popular as win at all costs, but I was happier because my career has been on my terms. Listen, learn, and move forward with people on your team that do the right thing. And part ways with those who don't, even if they deliver results. You have to be consistent and ensure everyone walks the walk, and that starts with you. You have to ask for feedback from your team, from customers, from peers. It's the only true way to measure whether you're living up to those values. And the third thing to keep in mind is take the long view. Here's that point in the speech where I tell you a little bit about my journey. My first job after graduating from Cal State Long Beach 30 years ago was selling direct mail ads for the Penny Saver. For you millennials who don't know what the Penny Saver is, it's a lot like Craigslist, but it comes in the mail and most people throw it away. In the ad sales world, it was probably the worst job you could get. It was starting at the bottom, eat what you kill, straight commission. My route was along Beach Boulevard in Huntington Beach, California. My clients were small businesses, the heartbeat of our economy. Car washes, nail salons, restaurants, and even a tarot card reader who amazingly never knew when I was coming to collect the check. It's hard to watch many of these businesses suffering now through no fault of their own. Anyway, I didn't love the job. It wasn't what I was shooting for, but it was all I could get. And I did it for five years and it taught me a lot of valuable lessons. I learned I like talking with new people. Small business owners are so interesting. They're great people with passion and drive. They are all in. I learned a lot about small businesses after being thrown out of more than I care to admit. I learned what made them tick, the metal it takes to run a company, how each one had similarities but still found their niche to set themselves apart, or they'd simply close down. Very often, that niche was exceptional service. I learned how to be resilient, having the door slammed in my face day after day, not getting paid because the check bounced, and having to find the strength to soldier on and get better. I also realized I needed to know more. 
which is why I decided to come to Anderson and get my MBA. I soon found my way into the television business. Ironically, an Anderson student and my college roommate told me about a job at the Weather Channel, again in sales, this time selling cable channels to cable operators. And over the course of the next 25 years, I learned I loved entertainment, the joy it brings to people. Playing a small role in making that happen has given me a lot of energy and passion for what I do. During my career, the cable television business went from nascent to enormous, and I've watched it transition again as the streaming explosion began. One thing I did right in my career was adapting to change. I've tried to figure out where the future is heading and think about what my role could be in it. And several years ago, I thought the future of entertainment would be in streaming. So that led me to Hulu, Sony, and now Amazon. That's the long view. It's not about where you start, it's looking forward to where you want to finish. In retrospect, and not entirely by design, these three characteristics, resiliency, the value of ethical leadership, and taking the long view, were my aces in the hole. You have to make the best of where you are. Take it in and learn. Now you may know, or think you know, exactly what you want to do. Or like me, you may not have a clue and have to figure it out. You will almost surely, though, change your course at least a little. I hope your experiences thus far, along with what you've gained here at Anderson, will give you the confidence to take your shot. So tap into that confidence, find your passion, and become the leaders of tomorrow. We're counting on you to find the solutions to brighten our future. And most importantly, we're counting on all of you to keep going and lift that tide for our nation and our planet. Congratulations, class of 2020.